Welcome back to The Greener Lawn. Today I'm gonna to teach you a quick tip on how to paint out weeds that are in your lawn that is not killed by traditional herbicides that are our post-emergence. It would be things like clumping fescue in a cool season lawn or a Bermuda that's in a cool season lawn or just weeds that are in there that are hard to get rid of. I like to use this on a weed called bindweed and I just can't spray something just in there that kills the whole vine like what this product will. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to paint things out with glyphosate. When you are doing this, please always follow the instructions to a T. You are using the personal protective equipment that is specified for this product. Always use that. What I'm going to do is teach you how to take a glyphosate product like this, put it in a small container like this, Get a paintbrush like this and just go paint it on. It's as simple as this. So the nice thing about glyphosate is, is that whatever it touches is that what it kills. So if it touches something, dries on it, it doesn't have leaching properties to where it's gonna continue to kill things in our lawn. So that's why this technique of painting it on with the paintbrush and allowing it to dry works so well because it doesn't continue to leach or cause any kind of problems like that. The thing you wanna pay attention to is if, if it's in an area that you plan on reseeding or putting any kind of new plantings in, you don't wanna have the extended control. This I'm going to be using in places I do not plan on having any of that so I can actually use this. Using regular glyphosate without any extended control is definitely something you would want to look at in your lawn if you plan on to reseed an area of painting out like say a clumping fescue if it doesn't have a lot of good grass in the in-betweens. But the nice thing is is if you have a rhizominous grass that you are trying to paint that out of like a Kentucky bluegrass or anything that actually has the aggressive nature of growing and filling back in, this, you don't have to worry about it. You can just paint it out and then just allow it to fill back in. I like to get a few different brushes like this just so that I have different sizes so that if I am doing bigger paint outs, I have a bigger one that I can hit on the bigger blades and I can just go a little bit quicker. But if I need fine, tedious stuff, I have smaller ones that I can get in there. Today I am going to be using kind of a middle brush just because I have a mixture of both. So I'll be using my middle brush. As you'll notice, I don't have very much in here. It does go a long way because we are just painting it out. It doesn't need a whole lot. That's the whole precision of this. I am looking at you, my client, who used a whole quart on a few large spots in your front yard when something like this would have done. That's the whole point of this, is to be very selective with what we paint out so that we're not killing the good stuff that's right next to it. This is very precision, just like this. You'll see right here that this is really close to a desirable plant, and I don't want to kill this plant. Even though it is going down, it is daffodil, it is done for the season, I don't want to kill it. So I just get in here, get a little bit on, and then just paint it on. That's all that needs to be done. See, like on this guy right here, He's in the grass, but I can go ahead and just paint it on him and it will just kill that plant. Now when that dries, only that plant will die. So just make sure that your grass isn't touching it. If you get a little bit on it, just go ahead and take it off. So areas like this, where it grows along this crack, is that all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and paint it through here. Once again, if you're not gonna pull it out, you can just paint it out. And it doesn't take much at all. The reason why I'm painting stuff like this out is because they have rhizomes underneath this area and it will kill a lot of that rhizome, if not all the rhizome that's underneath there. That's what's nice about glyphosate is that it's a systemic killer. So it goes through a whole plant and kills the whole plant off. So that's the reason why I'm choosing to kill this grass in this bed versus Trish trying to pull it out because I'm fighting it every single time I, uh, I pull this out. This is that bindweed I was saying. You can be super precision 
you know, and get in here. And so that I can kill this whole vine off is what I'll do is I'll take and I'll paint it on its leaves so that I have the bindweed being killed, but I'm not killing the grass around it. So being super careful not to hit the grass. And there we go. That is enough for it to get into it systemically. Now when this dries, it will not kill any grass around it. It will just take out this bindweed that I painted it on. So normally stuff like this, I normally do with a lot bigger brush. I wasn't planning on showing this kind of stuff, but since uh, I walked past it and I saw it, that's why I'm using this as a demonstration. Because I can be a little less selective because I'm trying to kill all this out right here. So as you can see, overall this has lasted quite a long time. Like I still have quite a bit left in here, and I have killed quite a bit of things. It goes a long way by doing this technique, so it isn't something that you should be using a whole ton on, because this is a kill product, and whatever it hits, it's going to kill. It's going to take it a little bit of time if the temperatures are cooler, but if you're around 70 degrees or above and you do this, it'll definitely um, put a hurting on a plant really quickly and you'll definitely start to see them dying within two weeks. So overall, this technique is super easy. It's super simple. It's something that if you want to take out plants and not harm other plants around it, or you have things that just a regular traditional herbicide will not take out, this paint out method is definitely the method for you. Super easy. Just go ahead and pick up yourself some glyphosate. I'll leave some links down in the description below and a couple of paint brushes that I recommend. Super easy, super quick. Don't make it difficult. Go out and paint that stuff out of your lawn that doesn't need to be there. So a couple of quick tips as you're doing this. If you let your lawn grow up so that these weeds or these pest uh, things that we're trying to get rid of get longer, we can get more blade surface area away from the grass. Because a lot of the times like clumping fescue and things like that will grow above and beyond so that we can hit them really easily. Then just let it be three days so that it can systemically move through the plant and let it dry for 24 hours before you water it. Those are kind of the criteria. Makes it a lot easier. Those are definitely ways of doing it. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, feel free to reach out to me at jeremyofthegreenerlawn at gmail.com. I'll get back to you. If you're looking for a post emergent because you have weeds that have popped up and you don't need to go to this extent by having a kill product because you have a regular weed, I recommend this for cool season lawns T-Zone. Watch this video, it'll take care of you. I'm Jeremy of The Greener Lawn, maker, Gone.